G'day, it's Nigel here from Sax School. Great to see you back for part three of our beginner saxophone quick start course. Just a reminder, in part one, we talked about how to set up our saxophone, our read, our mouthpiece, our neck strap. In part two, we learned how to start notes clearly with our tongue, and we learned our first song. But today's lesson is part three for alto sax. We're gonna learn the first six notes and another great tune. Hey, if you're a tenor player though, check out part three for tenor sax, same for soprano. The link for that's down below. Plus I'll have the links down there for the previous parts in this series too. So if you haven't watched the first two parts in this series yet, go check them out first and then let's get stuck in with part three. So grab your saxophone and let's work through this together. We're gonna to start by talking about where our left hand goes. Now we know where our thumbs go from the last lesson. So our left thumb goes on the button at the back and our right thumb goes under the hook at the bottom back of the alto saxophone. Same with every other saxophone actually. But let's talk about where our first finger goes, our index finger or our nose picker. If you look at the front of your saxophone, now everyone's saxophone is a little bit different here, but you can see that I've got this interesting spatula shaped key at the front. Now we're not gonna use that key first today. Instead, we're gonna use the key below it for our index finger. So try popping your finger down on that, and that is actually the note B. This is what note B sounds like. So why don't you have a go at playing that yourself, but remember, get that VU shape with your mouth, and then always start with your tongue on the reed, release it, and let that air flow out to get a lovely clean start. So the second finger goes on the next pearl just below that one, and that's the note A. So we've got two fingers down for A, and that one sounds like this. Okay, the third finger, you guessed it, it goes on the next pearl straight below that. Three fingers down is the note G, and that sounds like this. Okay, we've got three notes there, B, A, and G. Piece of cake, let's move on to the right hand. Oh, sorry, just having a quick tea break and checking the TikTok before we crack on with the rest of the lesson. You know, it's fun to learn a song like we're gonna win the lesson today, but imagine if you had access to like a thousand lessons and so like hundreds of other songs, plus also sessions where you could come along and have live stream sessions with a tutor and actually get help. I mean, that's an amazing thing. And all of that is what's included inside Sax School. Now, as I'm filming this, we have got a 14 day trial running. If you wanna go check out what we're doing, we're helping literally thousands of students every single day. There's a link down below where you can go and check it out. Right, I'm gonna finish my cuppa and then we can crack on with the rest of the lesson. So the right hand is much easier because we've only got three pearls down there. Oh, now just a reminder, when we stick any fingers down with our right hand, we must have our left three fingers down first, okay? So always have your left three fingers down when we add any of the fingers on the right hand. The first finger, of course, goes on the first pearl. Now that's the note F, and F sounds like this. If you add your second finger, you're gonna get the note E. And add your third finger down and you get the note D. I want to tell you a little bit about the way these notes work, but let's start by playing all of those notes one after the other. So we're going to start with our first finger down on the left hand B, and we're going to work our way all the way down to the note D. Are you ready? Here we go. Okay, let's take a quick minute to talk about the science behind how instruments work. We all know that bigger instruments like this baritone saxophone, for example, are really low. They sound low. Big instruments sound low. Whereas tiny instruments like this little piccolo sound super high. So it's exactly the same when we're learning the alto saxophone, because as we are adding fingers on, we are making the tube longer. B means the tube is this long, G means it's this long, D means it's this long. So it's really important to remember that we don't put down our right hand without having our left hand down first, and that rule goes through everything you'll play on the saxophone. But of course, like with every rule, there is an exception, and that's the note C. One more note that I'd like to show you today. So the, the note C is played with the middle finger of our left hand and only that note. So C sounds like this. 
So now we know seven notes, B, A, G, F, E, D, and C. Oh, and the C sharp that we learned in the last lesson. Man, we're romping through this. The other thing to quickly mention is that in music, we use the first seven letters of the alphabet, A down to G, A, B, C, D, E, F, and G. But in music, when we get to G, we go back to A, and it goes around and around forever. In fact, an easier way to think of this is that as we go up the letters in the alphabet, we go up in pitch, so it gets higher, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, A. And after we get to G, we go back to A again, and we keep going up A to G again, then A to G again. It also works the same in the other direction. So if you know your alphabet backwards, do you know your alphabet backwards? You're going down lower in pitch. So if we start on A again and go back to G, A down to G, F, E, D, C, B, A, G, F, E, D. Keep going all the way down. So now you understand all this, let's take the six notes that we've learned and put them into a piece. So I've written a fun little song for us to learn today and it's called Walkin' Home. And we're actually gonna start on the note C that we've just learned. The other thing that's cool about this song is, like the song we learned in the last lesson, there are some repeated sections. The first two bar section, which is repeated, sounds like this. Okay, so let's learn those notes. Now we're gonna start on the note we've just learned, which is the note C, our middle finger with our left hand. So we're going to go C, down to A, which is two fingers, back to C, and then go C, A, so in tempo, it sounds like this. One, two, three, four. C, A, C, C, A. Should we try playing that slowly together? Here we go. One, two, three, go. Okay, cool. Let's put the backing track on and play it in time with the music now. Brilliant, so we do that two bar phrase three times, and then for the fourth time through, we've got a brand new line, and that sounds like this. Okay, let's look at what's happening with those notes. Now we get a chance here to use every note that we've learned today. So we start on the note C, and we run all the way down. We go C, B, A, G, F, E, D, G. So that last bit there, we go from D up to G. So all we have to do is lift our right hand off to go from the D fingers up to the G fingers. So let's do that very, very slowly. Ready? One, two, three, four. Okay, let's try playing just that two bars with the backing track. Here we go. So there's just one note left, and that's the very last note where we play a nice long C. All right, brilliant. Well, we've learned the entire song. So now what I'm gonna do is put the entire backing track on, and let's play through the whole thing together. Now, don't forget, you can use the speed controls on the lesson here to slow it down if you need to. So just go over it as many times as you need until you feel really comfortable. Couple of little tips, though. Remember to start every note with your tongue. Remember to breathe really deeply, and to rem remember to try and keep your fingers as close to those keys as possible. I'm lifting them off so I can show you very easily which notes I'm playing, but when you're playing, just like when I'm practicing for myself, I try and keep my fingers really close to the keys, and you should too. Okay, let's go play through with the backing track. <laughs>
hey, that was awesome. Now, the next step is to unlock the whole next range on the saxophone. There's a whole bunch more notes that you can play, and it's actually really easy to get them out. I'm going to show you that in the next lesson, plus I'm going to show you a whole nother song that'll get your fingers going and make you really comfortable on the saxophone, particularly with this next important transition. So keep practicing hard. Don't forget to use this lesson as much as you need, and I'll catch you when you're ready on the next lesson.